And that then became uh, evolved into modern broadcasting, TV and radio and so forth. That evolved over the, over the next decades. And by the 1970s, we had a business model made out of this, which is called basically the, the attention economy. So we had the attention economy back then. This little excerpt here from the 1970s also has taught us something very important. It has to do with the business model of social media. It says, if you don't pay for the product, you are the product. So who is the product in TV? Well, the product in TV is your attention. So a minute in the Super Bowl commercial costs, I don't know how much money because what they're buying is, well, eyeballs, they call it a buying attention. So you don't pay for watching TV. So what is actually transacted is your attention. What is being sold is your attention and who buys it, which is sold by the platform provider, by the, by the TV offerer, and who buys it is the one who, who buys the ads. So there's a seller and a purchaser, and what is being transacted, the product, is basically you. It's your attention. So in this business model then basically evolved also uh, to, to the digital age, where again, we don't charge for social media, right? You can use that for free, not only social media, you also don't pay for Google Maps and for other things. So what is being transacted? Well, remember the 70s, if you don't pay for a product, very likely you are the product. Now it actually goes a step further because what we're doing here, this was the TV paradigm I showed you from the 70s, the attention, like the, the seconds of the Super Bowl ads that cost so much money and that you are the product because you don't pay for it. Now this new paradigm is not beyond the attention economy. It's like, I sometimes call it, you know, you could call it the persuasion economy. It's actually based on inducing behavioral change. So what happened here with Facebook, it knows you so well, it knows your data so well, and we will talk more about it. It knows you better than your family, than your partner, than you yourself, and it knows exactly how to trigger you. And with that, it can induce behaviors. Well, first of all, it can predict behaviors because it knows you very well. And one way to predict behavior is to trigger you. Now, that's why it's always so difficult on Thanksgiving when you're with a family because your family really knows how to trigger you because they know you so well. You know, your siblings, they really know how to trigger you. Or their uncle or your parents, oh, geez, going back home, you know, like that is, they really know how to trigger you. Why? Because they know you so well. Now, guess what? Artificial intelligence knows you better. And it knows you also then how to trigger you. And if I know you, I mean, if I kick you against the shin, you will react. So if I do... You know, A-B testing, blind A-B testing, there's no evil intentions. Is there? There's no evil intention. They just say like the algorithm just figures out, hey, I kick you against the shin, I can predict your response. <laughs> yeah, of course, you can predict your response when I kick you against the shin, right? So, but then actually social media makes money, not with your attention. It makes money with your predictable behavioral change. So see how I set up the Facebook ad? What I basically did here, like I only have to pay for if these people, for example, I could buy, have bought engagement. If so many and so and such many people engage with my post, click, like, purchase something, and every time there's a predictable behavioral change, that's basically their business model. They would say so many hundreds or thousand people are the potential audience that we could get to click on your ad. So, and every time there's a successful predictable behavioral change, then it makes cha-ching, now, in the social media, in the persuasive technology uh, cash register, that's actually how it works. So beyond the attention only, the attention is just to get to know you. And beyond that, then getting to predict your behavioral change. So you could call this the, the persuasion or the uh, inducing behavioral change or the brainwash economy. Call it as you may. But that is what this actually is about. That's, that's the underlying business model of these persuasive technologies, which are so pervasive in social media.